Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today I'll be doing a review on a Gemini Jets United Boeing 777-300ER in their 2019 updated revised livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. I purchased this model from Easy Toys and their website address is www.easytoys.com. But first, before I go into details about this particular aircraft model, please allow me to share some information about the history of United Airlines and how they actually came about. United Airlines is an American-based airline that was founded on April 6, 1926 in Boise, Idaho as Barney Airlines by the late Walter T. Barney, who also founded Continental Airlines. And after aviation pioneer the late William E. Bowen, who also founded the Boeing Manufacturing Aerospace Giant, formed his airline Boeing Air Transport, merged this company with Pratt & Whitney to form the UATC, the United Aircraft and Transport Corporation in 1929. And over the next 28 months, the UATC acquired Pacific Air Transport, Stout Air Services, Varney Airlines, and the National Air Transport from an airline consolidated merger. And as a result, the airline was formed from the UATC, the United Aircraft and Transport Corporation on March 28, 1931, and became the airline which is known to the world today as United Airlines. United is currently the ninth oldest operating airline in the world based on foundation date after KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, Avianca, Qantas, Aeroflot Russian Airlines, Czech Airlines, Finnair, Tajik Air, and Delta respectively. It is also the third largest operating airline in the world when measured in terms of fleet size and number of routes as well as the fourth largest operating airline in the world when measured in terms of generated revenue as well as in terms of number of passengers carried. Whereas, the headquarters of United Airlines is located in the Willis Tower, formerly known as the Sears Tower, which is located at 233 South Wacker Drive in Chicago, Illinois, while the airline's main hub and base of operations is located on the grounds of Chicago O'Hare International Airport, which is located approximately 14 miles northwest of the downtown district section of Chicago, Illinois. United Airlines also has operational hubs that's located at Denver International Airport, located in Denver, Colorado, Guam, AB1 Pat International Airport, located in Guam, Houston Bush Intercontinental Airport, located in Houston, Texas, Los Angeles International Airport, located in Los Angeles, California, Newark Liberty International Airport, located in Newark, New Jersey, San Francisco International Airport, located in San Francisco, California, and Washington Dulles International Airport located in the Washington DC suburb of Dulles, Virginia. United is also the world's largest operating airline based by the number of destinations served. As of March 2022, or at the time of this video review posting, United flies to 342 destinations in 48 countries across six inhabited continents, as United Airlines is one of 10 airlines to own this actual distinction of permanently flying to all six inhabited continents, along with Air Canada, Air China, British Airways, Delta Airlines, Korean Air, Emirates, Qantas, Qatar Airways, and South African Airways respectively, with an operating fleet of 858 aircraft, which includes 96 777s, in which 19 of those are the Boeing 777-200s, 55 of those are the Boeing 777-200ERs, and the remaining 22 are the Boeing 777-300ERs, including this one you're looking at here, with no unfulfilled order pending on none of these aircraft types. Also, as of March 2022, or at the time of this video review posting, United Airlines is one of 150 airlines in the world of aviation that currently operates as a certified three-star airline carrier, according to the international airline review firm, Skytrax Magazine, and the Boeing customer code for United Airlines for this particular aircraft is 22. All right, everyone, let's take a look at the front of the box here, and what you're looking at is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the United billboard title, the airline's logo, the computer-generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type, the 1200 scale diecast model aircraft information, as well as the item number information at the front of the box. All right, now you're looking at the back of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, some more other information, the Boeing official licensing product decal, as well as the social media pages of Gemini Jets. You can pause and read that information if you like, but in the meantime, I'm going to keep this moving, all right?
All right, now you're looking at the top of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the adult collectible model and warning information, as well as the item number information at the top of the box. All right, now you're looking at the bottom of the box, and what you see at the bottom of the box is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, as well as the 1200 scale diecast model information and some more information you see there at the bottom of the box. Now, now you're looking at the left side of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the 1200 scale diecast model information, the item number information, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, as well as the aircraft type on the left side of the box. All right, now you're looking at the right side of the box. It's pretty much the same information on the left side of the box I showed you earlier on, okay? All right, now you're looking at the front of the box, but this time I got to lay down on the table here because there's some information on the other side of this flap here you see right here. So I'm going to flip that up, but I'm going to see what's inside of the package first. Check it out. And this is what you see in there. I'm going to take all that out. You see the actual model, the gear replacement doors, the model stand. I'm going to take all that in a moment, but I'm going to let you see the real important information behind that flap. Let's check it out. All right. This is the information you see on the other side of the flap concerning this particular aircraft. You also see the, the specifications and all that other stuff on there. You can pause and read it as you like, and as well as the, uh, the width and the lift of the aircraft. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to keep this moving. You can pause and read that if you like. All right, I pulled out the packaging here, and this is what you're looking at here. The top of it is clear plastic, hard plastic, and the bottom part is foam, so I'm going to take the top part off first. And this is what you're looking at here. The actual aircraft model, the model stand, as well as the gear replacement doors inside that uh, packaging there. I'm going to take all that out right now. All right, now you're looking at the actual model stand that I took out of the packaging, and it's pretty sturdy to say the least. It's metal, but that black padding up here, folks, the purpose of this black padding here is not only to protect your model, but also prevent it from being damaged or scratched when you put your aircraft model on this particular model stand. All right, now you're looking at this plastic bag, and what you see in this plastic bag are the actual gear replacement door that was part of the packaging as well. Please stay tuned as I go into detail for the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors for this particular aircraft model, all right? All right, with all that information out of the way about the history of United Airlines and how they actually came about and still operating strongly despite what's going on as we speak, plus all the details here at the front of the box as well as the information at the back of the box, plus the information on the other side of the flap, plus the packaging here, as well as the model stand and the actual gear replacement doors inside that plastic bag. With no further ado, everyone, here is the actual model out of the packaging. Check it out. There it is, everyone, the Gemini Jet United Boeing 777-300ER in their 2019 updated revised livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. All right, allow me to share some information about the uh, United Airlines Boeing 777-300ER extended range jetliner aircraft you're looking at here and how it became a part of their fleet and which is actually becoming a game changer for United, which they also reaping benefits as we speak. United Airlines became the second American-based operator as well as the third North American-based carrier overall after Air Canada and American Airlines that acquired this prestigious state-of-the-art aircraft as United took delivery of its first of 22 Boeing 777-300ERs, which bared the registration ship number November 58031, which was later changed to registration ship number November 2331 uniform at a special delivery ceremony that was held at the Boeing 777 Assembly Line Facility in Everett, Washington on December 21, 2016, and took delivery of their very last Boeing 777-300ER extended range jetliner aircraft which bared the registration ship number November 2352 on March 20, 2020. Then made its actual debut seven, day, seven weeks later, sorry about that, on February 13, 2017, and that's when United performed a four-hour demonstration flight when it flew from Chicago O'Hare International Airport in Chicago, Illinois, to San Francisco International Airport in San Francisco, California, then performed its first inaugural validation flight on this particular aircraft three days later on February 16, 2017, when it flew from Newark Liberty International Airport in Newark, New Jersey, to San Francisco International Airport in San Francisco, California, 
for flight certification purposes, which allowed the flight crews, the maintenance crews, as well as the ground staff personnel time to get familiar with the aircraft per se before the actual international flight launch. Then fast forward one month later, and that's when United's first inaugural international flight on this aircraft actually took place, which was on March 25, 2017, and that's when United officially began utilizing this aircraft on their San Francisco to Hong Kong route, replacing the iconic Boeing 747-400 that was previously utilized on this particular route, as Newark Liberty in San Francisco has become the international gateway basis for this particular aircraft type, with the lion's share of their Boeing 777-300ERs are currently based and operated out of the airline's West Coast hub, West Coast hub, sorry about that, at San Francisco International Airport. United has ordered a total of 22 Boeing 777-300ERs to add to their fleet. And at the time of this video review posting, all 22 of United's Boeing 777-300ERs are currently operating in service as this aircraft has become the aircraft that eventually replaced the airline's iconic fleet of Boeing 747-400s, which officially flew off into the aviation sunset on November 7, 2017, as the Boeing 777-300ER has now become the airline's official flagship jetliner for the Chicago-based airline for the foreseeable future. Now let's talk about the livery scheme you see on this aircraft model. This is the current updated revised livery scheme of United Airlines which was unveiled on April 24, 2019 at a special unveiling ceremony that was held at the United Airlines Aircraft Hangar Facility, which is located on the grounds of Chicago's O'Hare International Airport in Chicago, Illinois, as the Chicago-based airline decided to embark on their next phase of its evolution process as a global airline carrier when United Airlines decided to unveil their new corporate identity, which included a new livery makeover and an updated revised logo as this livery scheme is actually called the Blue Evolution Livery Scheme. The Blue Evolution Livery Scheme, as this livery scheme is officially called, is actually resembling some striking similarities which resembles to that of the airline's alternative Dreamliner Swoop Livery Scheme that was first unveiled on their Boeing 787-8s in 2012, as well as their next generation Boeing 737 MAX 9s in 2018 respectively, with the only difference in number one, the United Billboard title has been enlarged, as the huge United Billboard title can now be visibly seen entirely on the front forward section of the fuselage. Number two, the iconic Globe logo has also been enlarged as well. And number three, the gold color that was part of the airline's previous post-merger livery scheme that used to be displayed as the cheat line of the aircraft has also been ousted and replaced with the three different shade colors of blue in which United describes a Rhapsody blue, the United Blue and the Sky Blue, as well as the color of runway gray. And the first aircraft that actually begun sporting this livery scheme was a Boeing 737-800 that bared the registration ship number November 372-67, as the color of blue has become the predominant color in United's updated revised livery scheme. This livery scheme is also a reflection as well as a visual representation of United's ongoing brand as it continues to evolve as an airline, while at the same time staying true to the history it has actually developed as an airline since 1926 of serving customers proudly from around the world as the Chicago-based airline is expected to have their entire fleet painted in this updated revised livery scheme by the end of 2026. United's updated revised Blue Evolution livery scheme was actually created and designed by United Airlines who also collaborated with the consultancy firm of Axel Noble, whose global headquarters is located in Amsterdam, Netherlands, whereas its North American headquarters is located in Nashville, Tennessee, and Avion Graphics, whose global headquarters is located in Burbank, California, respectively. So, with all that information out of the way about this particular aircraft, as well as the uh, updated revised Blue Evolution livery scheme you see on here. With no further ado, let us get down to the nitty gritty and allow me to show you all the details on this aircraft model. Shall we? Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the port slash left side. We're gonna start at the front of the aircraft starting with the front and those landing gears right here, the landing gear struts, the landing gear door featuring the ETOPS information, and the 2149, that's the fleet number. And then you see the pewter tubes and the static ports, what have you, the uh, radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, as well as the cockpit window. Please stay tuned as I'll give you a better visual view of those details later on in the model review. But between the cockpit window 
in the L1 entry store is the Star Alliance decal, which is this little decal you're looking at here. And United joined the Star Alliance along with Air Canada, Lufthansa, SAS Scandinavian Airlines System, and Thai Airways International as one of the five founding members on May 14, 1997, which consists of 26 airline members from five inhabited continents. All right, we still at the front of the aircraft. I had to bring it up a little closer because there's some information underneath that Star Alliance decal. And that's the shared purpose slogan of United, connecting people and uniting the world, which is this slogan right here. And this is the newly updated slogan for United Airlines as the airline continues to play their role from an airline slash customer service perspective each and every day to go above and beyond the call of duty to unite the world by connecting people to the moments that matter most as United strives to become the best airline for their employees, their customers, as well as everyone's in between that the airline serves from around the world respectively. All right. All right, we still at the front of the aircraft. I'm looking at this cheek line. It's painted in Rhapsody Blue, as you see that, as it curves all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. I'm going to show you that right now. Awesome. And then you see the United title painted in United Blue here as well. And then you see the, uh, the undercarriage belly of the aircraft is in runway gray. You see displayed there as well. All right, now you're looking at the center of the aircraft, and underneath the wings is the outer landing bogey gears here, the triple outer landing bogey gears you see there, including the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. But more importantly, you see these big, massive engines, and these are the General Electric GE90-115B turbofan-type engines that are used on this particular United Boeing 777-300ER extended-range jetliner aircraft. You also see the engine cones right there, and the engine is also painted in United Blue as well. Now I'm going to turn this aircraft model around. We're going to actually find out if the turbo fan blades actually spin on this aircraft. Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the port side, left side of the aircraft, featuring the engine strikes right there. Now let's see if the turbo fan blades spin. Let's check it out. Ooh. Oh, there we go. A little stuck there, but it got unstuck. Okay, so far. All right, perfect. And then you see the inboard landing light right there, as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears, including the landing gear struts, as well as the actual landing gear doors. All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the starboard slash right side of the aircraft, featuring the engine strikes there. Unfortunately, the uh, turbo fan blades on this, uh, this side of the air engines here do not spin, which is stuck, which is kind of a bummer, but... Wow, it is what it is though. So that's the only flaw I see on this one so far. Anybody else got this model that had that same as you? Please post it in the comments section. I'd like to know. All right. But you got a better view of um, the inboard landing lights as well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears, including the landing gear struts as well as the actual landing gear doors on this side of the aircraft. All right. All right, now looking at the front of the aircraft, we got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the radon nose cone the nose gear door, the landing gear lights inside of the nose gear door, the landing gear struts, as well as the front visual view of the front nose landing gears. All right, looking at the rake wingtip device on this side of the aircraft featuring the strobe light on the edge of the uh, rake wingtip you see there, as well as the red navigation light you see displayed there by the edge of the wingtip as well. All right, now at the back of the aircraft here on the uh, port side, and right ab above the economy class window is the actual registration ship number, November 2749 uniform. Registration ship number, November 2749 uniform. This aircraft is actually the 19th United Boeing 777-300ER extended range jetliner aircraft that actually entered the carrier's fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on November 27, 2019, and was delivered to United Airlines on December 6, 2019. This aircraft was also the second wide-body aircraft as well, as the fourth overall aircraft in United's fleet that was also painted in the airline's updated revised Blue Evolution livery scheme after the Boeing 737-800, the Airbus A319, and the Boeing 767-300ER, which was unveiled on November 27, 2019. 
All right, we still at the back of the aircraft here on the um, port side, and right next to the uh, registered ship number is the actual American flag decal, which is this little decal you're looking at right here. And this flag decal actually represents the country where United currently operates from as one of the major flag carrier airlines of the United States of America. And then that's the actual fleet number you see right there by that door right there. And then now you're looking at the tail fin of the aircraft, how it's painted in sky blue, United Blue, that's the sky blue, that's sky blue, that's United Blue right there, and those three colors right there. And this is the updated revised United Globe logo displayed on the tail fin of the aircraft, as I mentioned right here. And this was the actual logo of Continental Airlines. And after the two airlines merged on May 2nd, 2010, United decided to keep the Continental Airlines Globe logo, as this logo can actually be seen on just about every United aircraft flying today. However, after United unveiled their new livery scheme on April 24, 2019, the gold color that used to be displayed inside of the Globe logo was eventually replaced with the color of sky blue as the renewally replacement color. That's sky blue right there, okay? All right, now you stay at the back of the aircraft. What you're looking at is the APU exhaust hole, which stands for zero power unit. There's a hole there somewhat. And then there's the strobe light right above the APU exhaust hole, as well as the entire aircraft from the rear view angle. Check it out. There it is. The United Boeing 777-300ER in their blue evolution livery scheme from the rear view angle. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the starboard side where you see the front nose landing gears, the landing gear struts, the landing gear door featuring the fleet number, the ETOS information, the P2 static ports, the radar nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows, the star lines decal, the, uh, the shared purpose slogan of United, connecting people and uniting the world. That's the slogan right there. The United billboard title also painted in United Blue on this side. And you see the cheat line is painted in Rhapsody Blue. It goes all the way back to the rear of the aircraft on this side here as well. And then you see the front cargo container loading door, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft. And runway grade L also splits its back to the aircraft, into the aircraft as well. There. All right, now you're looking at the center of the aircraft here on the uh, starboard side, and what you're looking at is the outer landing triple bogey gears here, including the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear door. But more importantly, you're looking at these General Electric GE90-115B turbofan type engines on this side of the aircraft well, which is also painted in United Blue on this side as well. All right, now you're looking at the rake wingtip on this side of the aircraft, featuring the green navigation light right there, as well as the strobe light you see on the edge of this ring, rake wingtip device there as well. All right, now you're looking at the back of the aircraft here on the starboard side, where you see the cheat line stretches back here in Rhapsody Blue, and then there's a runway gray uh, part section there as well. Then you see the rear cargo container loading door, the AFT bolt bin door, the registration ship number, the American flag decal, as well as the United logo is painted in the three colors of, no, it's two colors. Sky blue, midnight blue, sky blue, midnight blue, okay? Okay, before I show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft mount, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft mount in full detail, please allow me to let you check out one feature, which is the rolling gear, so I'm going to let you check that out right now. Uh, the front nose gear roll, but the bogey is a little challenging, but it's okay. That front nose gear, you got to be careful with that because it's uh, very sensitive. And then the, gear, the model does tilt, and the front nose gear does swivel, as you can see there, there, and there. So, with that said, let's check out this aircraft model from the aerial bird's eye view. Let's check it out. All right, now looking at this aircraft from the aerial bird's eye view, we're going to start at the front of the aircraft. You see the radar nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows, then you slide up this way. You see the nine billboard titles on both sides. You see the anti-collision beacon light, the satellite um, communications antenna right there, uh, another high-frequency antenna, the ADF antennas in 3D, 
And that's the Wi-Fi box antenna right there in 3D. A couple more antennas. And then there's the vertical stabilizer known as the tail fin. And then there's the horizontal stabilizer featuring two little dots right there, as well as right there. Those little dots, everyone, are actually called the luminator lights. And the sole purpose of those luminator lights is it actually light up this tail here when it flies during nighttime. Now let's check out the engines and the wings. You see the engines there. You see the wing walkway there, as well as the flaps, slats, ailerons, spoilers, what have you. Fuel dump valve, as well as the rake wing tip featuring the strobe light on this side of the aircraft. Now let's check out over here. See the engines there, the wing walkway, as well as the flaps, slats, ailerons, spoilers, what have you. Fuel dump valve, as well as the curb, as well as the rake wing tip on here. Sorry about that including strobe light on this side of the aircraft as well. All right, now looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft, which is mostly white, the front part, then the rapsy blue, the cheek line, and everything else is runway gray. We're gonna start at the front there. You see the radar nose cone, the 777-300, that's the aircraft variant. You see the pilot's cape hatch door, the, uh, nose gear doors as the front nose landing gears and it's everything uh runway gray here you see the uh anti-collision beacon light the hole where the stand goes in at the gemini jets decal a couple more frequency antennas pressure relief valve uh the um apu housing door as well as the horizontal stabilizers underneath now let's check out the gears right here tilt perfect the engines there as well as the wings underneath See the flaps, slats, ailerons, spoils, what have you. Field dump valve, as well as the rake wing tip and the strobe light you see underneath there. Now let's check out the gears over here. Tilt, the engine's there, as well as the flaps, slats, ailerons, spoils, what have you. Field dump valve, as well as the rake wing tip device featuring the strobe light on this side of the aircraft as well. All right, since I show you this aircraft mount from the aerial bird's eye view, as well as the undercarriage belly view as its aircraft in full detail, now I'm gonna put it on that nice little model stand that actually came with the model. So no further ado, everyone, here is the model on the stand. Let's check it out. All right, fine got this model on the stand, no problem, has no hesitation whatsoever. Now you see it being displayed in a takeoff landing position with the model stand being viewed from the port side of the aircraft. All right, now you see it being displayed in a takeoff position, takeoff landing position, with the model stand being viewed from the front view angle of the aircraft. All right, now you see the model being displayed on the stand, being displayed in a takeoff landing position, being viewed from the starboard side of the aircraft. And finally, you see this model being Displayed on the stand, being viewed in the takeoff landing position, being viewed from the tail cam angle. All right, before I take this model stand, I got it at this angle for a reason, and the reason is it's the magnetic gears I showed you that came with the model earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it on. Let's see what I'm talking about. Start with the front nose gear right here. That's magnetic. The gear here on the port side, that's magnetic, as well as the gear on the starboard side that's magnetic as well so with that said since i got all the gears off here i'm going to see this model at a different angle in flight mode slash gears up position without the gears let's check it out all right now you see the model being displayed without the gears in flight mode position now you got one or two out how you want to continue to display this if you want to continue to display your model like this without the gears in flight mode slash gears up position that's fine you see these gear replacement doors I showed you earlier, featuring the two little toothpicks? That's the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors, so you substitute your gears while you display your model like this in flight mode slash gears up position without the gears. Or you can do like I do, just keep it in the gear down position. Gears up, gear down, your choice. I choose to leave mine on there because that adds more value to the model. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put these gears back on this model, take this model off the stand, and go ahead and wrap up this model review. All right? All right, let's talk about the seating configuration. The United Boeing 777-300ER extended range jetliner aircraft 
seats 350 passengers in a four-class configurate cabin layout. Here's the breakdown, everyone, from rows 1 to 18, which will be from here to about right here. You have 60 Polaris business class seats, rows 20 to 22, which will be from here to here. You have 24 premium plus class seats, rows 30 to 35, which will be from here to here plus rows 45, which is right there. You have additional 62 economy plus class seats and rows 34 to 58, which will be about from here to right back here. You have additional 204 economy class seats, which brings a total of 350 seats. And finally, in addition to San Francisco as the first demonstrated flight destination, as well as the first inaugural validated flight destination from Chicago, O'Hare, and Newark, respectively, as well as Hong Kong as the first inaugural international flight destination for this particular aircraft. United Airlines currently employs this aircraft or have previously utilized their Boeing 777-300ERs on routes from San Francisco, California to Frankfurt, Germany, Taipei, Taiwan, Newark, New Jersey, Hong Kong, Shanghai, Pudong, Beijing capital, Tokyo, Narita, Auckland, New Zealand, Amsterdam, Netherlands, Sydney, Australia, London, Heathrow, Tel Aviv, Israel, So Ichion, and Chicago O'Hare. From Chicago O'Hare to San Francisco, California, Newark, New Jersey, Tokyo, Narita, and Hong Kong. From Newark, New Jersey to Mumbai, India, Delhi, India, San Francisco, California, Tokyo, Narita, Chicago O'Hare, Brussels, Belgium, London, Heathrow. Hong Kong, Frankfurt, Germany, Tel Aviv, Israel, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Rome, Fumicito, and Barcelona, Spain, from Houston Bush to London Heathrow, and from Washington, Dulles to Munich, Germany. Those were the routes. Well, everyone, this will conclude this model review. I'd like to know if you got this model or you plan on getting this model, if you can find it. At the time this video, this model is pretty much hard to find as we speak. I highly recommend if you can get your hands on it. So with that said, please take care. God bless, and above all, stay safe out here. There's more model content coming. Peace.